doing a project for work. What do you do? I'm an aerospace engineer. Do you know what aerospace engineering is? No. What is that? Well, aerospace engineering is the designing and building of things that fly. It is then further broken down into two subcategories, aeronautics and astronautics. What are those? Aeronautics is anything that flies inside the atmosphere. So, like airplanes and kites? Exactly. Wow, that's so cool. So rockets and planes are the same thing? Not quite. Astronautics is anything that flies outside the atmosphere, which is the category rockets fall under. Aeronautics is inside the atmosphere. Both study things that fly, just in different ways. Which one do you study, Mom? I study astronautics. I like to build and design rockets and satellites. Wow, I want to do that too. That would be cool. Women only account for 13.9% of aerospace engineers, so we sure do need more. Hi, my name is Malin. I found Girls Rocket from my Girl Scout Gold Award to educate and inspire more girls to pursue aerospace engineering. I have always been fascinated with the solar system, rocket launches, and meteor showers. One time, when I was little, my dad woke my siblings and I up very early in the morning to watch a rocket launch. I was the only one who ended up staying awake. My dad and I walked across the street to the park so we could, would have a better view of the sky. I remember the little dot that flew across the sky and how cool it was to see something flying to outer space, even though I could only see it as a dot. I didn't realize I could actually make the rocket I witnessed flying across the sky. In fact, my career goals at the time were either a sushi chef, a doctor, or artist. A couple years ago, I attended space camp at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. At first, I didn't want to even go. But my parents sent my two sisters and I, insisting we would all have fun because of our love of astronomy and building things. I loved the missions, daily challenges, and launching a tiny rocket into the air. By the end of the week, I fell in love with aerospace engineering. Since then, I have joined an aerospace club where we design and build rockets, some which are bigger than I am. My favorite part about being a scientist, it's learning. It's reading articles about tiny dinosaurs that they've just found or learning about new planets. Always challenging yourself to learn something new, to figure out what you don't know or what you thought you knew that's wrong and learning the reality or, or learning something new behind it. A lot of people think that as a scientist, you're supposed to know everything. And it's amazing when you explain to them that as a scientist, I'm supposed to study stuff that I don't know. I'm supposed to do an investigation where I am trying to figure out if I'm right or wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm okay with that because whether I'm right or wrong, I learned something. And I think a lot of times that's where people tend to misunderstand what science is about. I really enjoy STEM because it allows me to be really creative in a more scientific way and it allows me to think in ways that I would never have thought of before. And I think it's really interesting how STEM is never ending. There's always new ideas to explore. There's always new things to learn. I think it's just one of the most interesting parts of anything we ever learn in school and even outside of school. When I grow up, I want to do something related to biology, specifically being a doctor. I specifically think um, doing anything with neuroscience or psychology is really interesting. My name is Gabrielle and I am 14 years old in 10th grade. When I grew up, I want to be a mechanical engineer. My dream job is to work at NASA on rovers. I was introduced to aerospace engineering when I was 9 years old and went to space camp. At first I thought I wanted to be an astronaut, but then I gravitated towards the idea of building rovers.
When I was a kid, I loved STEM. I loved exploring. I loved going outside and looking at things and figuring things out. It was something that I had a knack for and I didn't realize at the time I had a knack for it. I just knew that it was something that I could do and that I could have fun with and that really interested and intrigued me. As a child, I did know what aerospace engineering was. Um, I have an older brother who was very into astronauts and rocket launches. I remember both of us staying home together from school for the first shuttle launch. So it was a really cool thing that we did together. Um, and it was something that we really both enjoyed. Throughout history, people have been interested in flight and how to make it so humans can fly. The concept is even integrated into many cultures. One example is the ancient Greek myth Icarus, where father builds wings for himself and his son Icarus to escape from the confines of a prison. Icarus ended up, after many warnings from his father, flying too close to the sun, which resulted in the wax holding the wings together melting. The story didn't end well. The first recorded appearance of aerospace engineering not in myths, was in 1000 BCE when the Chinese invented kites that carried men to scout troops. In the early years of aerospace engineering, before it was even called that, the inventors focused on bird-like designs. In 1100 CE, two separate people designed bird-like wings. Both did not end well. Leonardo da Vinci, famous for painting the Mona Lisa, and also drew blueprints of flying machines in the 1500s. At least one was similar to today's helicopters. He modeled them after bird's wings, however, he never built them. In the 1900s, the Wright brothers built the first airplane by using long wings to help catch air currents. The brothers brought humankind closer to the dream of flight. Less than a hundred years after the Wright brothers, mankind took to outer space. In 1961, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin was the first human to ever go to outer space. Flies were the first living thing to go to, into outer space. In 1969, roughly eight years later, America beat Russia in the space race to the moon. Astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong were the first to walk on the moon. Michael Collins was also on the Apollo 11 mission, but stayed in the command module the whole time. To make it so Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had a way to get back. Now humankind have their thoughts on Mars with many space companies working on getting people to Mars in the early 2030s. Now, the history of aerospace engineering isn't just made by men. There are many amazing women who helped contribute to the making of history. In 1932, Amelia Earhart was the first female to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. She planned to try to fly around the world when she disappeared mid-flight. To this day, no one knows what happened to her. In 1963, Valentina Tereshkova, another Russian cosmonaut, was the first female to ever go to outer space. She also holds the record as the youngest female to ever go to space and the only female to ever go solo. Sally Ride, the first American woman to go to outer space, went in 1983. That was almost 20 years after Valentina. If not flying the aircraft and spacecraft themselves, Many women helped behind the scenes to make the dream possible. Elizabeth McGill the, was the first woman to get a master's in aerospace engineering. She got in 1929 from the University of Michigan. She helped build aircraft for Canada during World War II. In the 1960s, women were used as computers or mathematicians in the race to get man to the moon. Mary Jackson, a mathematician and aerospace engineer, worked from 1951 to 1985 at NACA, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, later changed to NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. 
after humans start to focus on going to space. She was one of many women who helped make the Apollo mission successful. My name is Kayan, I'm 19 years old and I'm currently studying aerospace engineering at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Hello. My name is Janelle Wellens, and I have a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and I'm currently working at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Hi, my name's Kira, and I'm an aerospace engineer. I got a bachelor's degree in physics, I have a master's degree in space systems, and I have a PhD in nuclear engineering. I work for a not-for-profit company that helps the government make better choices when it comes to our space satellite systems. I primarily work in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I run a team of about 70 engineers that helps the Air Force's space test program fly research and development satellites before they turn into production satellites. Some of the production missions that we do have include things like GPS, the GPS constellation that helps you navigate the roads or uses, you know, Google Maps will use something like that constellation to help you get from one place to another. I liked STEM for as long as I can remember. I always enjoyed the problem solving aspect of it. And the fact that there's so much you can learn how to do. It really fits any interest. When I was a kid, I don't even really recall if STEM was a thing, or at least the word STEM. We didn't have any robotics classes or programming or coding. None of that was really around, but I did have, you know, the basic math and physics and science classes. And I can say that when I was a kid growing up, I definitely enjoyed STEM, mostly because I felt like I was finally getting an answer to all of the mysterious things that would happen in our world and in nature even. So I've always had a really great appreciation of how math can be used to describe the strange and beautiful patterns that we see in nature and how physics was a way to be able to accurately be able to answer questions about our natural world. And so, uh, but I think the main thing is that when I was in school, I wasn't solely all about STEM. I didn't only like my science and math classes. And I think that's been really important for me actually, because in the long run, I would say that being able to tell stories, speak to others, have an appreciation for history and how to write in a way that's easy for others to understand has served me very well in becoming a well-rounded engineer. So even though STEM wasn't my only passion, it definitely was a passion growing up. As a kid, I liked STEM. I came from a family of computer engineers. I was always much more interested in the mechanical things, how gears worked, how materials worked together. My brothers always loved the computer side of the house, so they would focus on programming. I picked up a little bit as a kid, but we used to always joke in my family that they would repair my computer if it was broken and I would repair their cars. As a child, I don't think I knew what aerospace engineering was. I actually grew up on Patrick Air Force Base, which is just south of the launch site in Cape Canaveral. I would grow up watching rocket launches from my backyard. My father would wake us up in the middle of the night and we would rush outside as fast as we could to watch it. And I remember always asking if, if there were people on board and sometimes there were and sometimes there weren't, but it really just inspired me to be able to go into the sciences later. And then when I was in high school, the only class that really challenged me was physics and so I decided to parlay that into into my grad or into my undergraduate degree and, and obtain a bachelor's degree. When I was working on that degree, uh, since I was so close to the space center, I ended up getting a job working on the space shuttle, and that was my first real introduction to aerospace engineering. I was familiar with what aerospace engineering could produce, but I don't think I specifically learned about aerospace engineering itself until at least middle school. So, back to when I was growing up. 
I can confidently say that I didn't really know what aerospace engineering was. I really had no clue. Um, I did have an idea of what engineering was itself though, and that's because I would go to my mom's job for bring your child to work day. And even though she herself wasn't an engineer, her coworkers were. And so I got this idea that engineers built stuff. They had a pretty cool job. At that time, I was definitely into video games. I still am now. And I could definitely tell you that I was just, my mind was so blown away that we had found a way to put so much information on a CD and this magical console player could actually turn that CD into information you could see on a screen. Just so amazing. So to find out that engineering existed definitely piqued my interest, but because I didn't have any specialty classes in high school to really capitalize on that, I wouldn't say it was totally at the forefront of my mind, especially as I was getting ready to graduate from high school. When engineers come across a problem in their work, they use a series of steps called the engineering process to solve the problem. Step one of the process is to actually find a problem. Step two is to brainstorm how to fix the problem. This can be done in many different ways. For example, researching things similar to the current problem always helps. Or writing down on a piece of paper all the different ways that can possibly solve the problem and choosing one to try out. Which brings us to step three. Create a prototype. The prototype is a smaller version of the real thing. Sometimes it is a working prototype and sometimes it isn't and just looks like a smaller version of the big idea. The next step is the best part, testing. Engineers test the design to see if it works. If it fails, that is perfectly fine. What they do then is reimagine a different design improving upon their original idea. Then they test that design to see if it works. Engineers repeat the steps until they find a solution to their problem. At the end, they share their findings with others. This process has been used for years, even if the engineers didn't know they were using it. So then that begs the question, why and slash how did I even decide that I wanted to become an aerospace engineer? Well, the short of it is that I had no clue that my path would take me where I am now. So basically, when I was in school, I just had an idea that I would be going to college. I didn't have a specific college in mind. In fact, junior year, I had been receiving so many pamphlets and mail from colleges and universities all around the country. I kind of didn't know what to do with it. So after a certain point, I started to actually throw them in the trash can because I didn't know what else to do with it. It was a little overwhelming. And I remember on one occasion, my mom saw me about to throw out a pamphlet to this summer program that you could apply to at this school called MIT or the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And I remember seeing that pamphlet and my mom saying that, MIT is a great school, you need to apply to this. And I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll apply. And I did day before, cause I was always a procrastinator. And it was only months later that I realized that MIT was this world renowned school for engineering. And not only that, but the program I applied to, if you got in, it, it was free, it was free. You just had to get yourself to campus and you'd be spending weeks of other students learning about STEM. But problem was the previous year out of over 2000 candidates, they had only admitted one person from New Jersey, which is where I was from. And so uh, that really made me feel like uh, I may have wasted my time, mom. I shouldn't have applied to that. But turns out that I actually got a package later that spring. My mom called me home to open it. I insisted it couldn't be telling me that I got in. But lo and behold, I did. And I went to MIT that summer. I had an incredible time, met amazing people. And that's when I kind of realized that I think I could do this STEM thing. Now, when I actually got to MIT, it was a different story because I never really had a game plan. It's not the student who had the five-year, 10-year plan. 
But when I got there, it was time to start thinking about what I wanted to major in. And I really did have a have an underlying passion for theoretical mathematics. And I thought that that's what my major would be in. But I took the advice of some upperclassmen and I tried out one of the majors that was being offered at the intro level. And so I decided to do aerospace engineering basically because it had space in the name. And who doesn't think that space is cool? <laughs> So I took the intro class and on the first day, the professor's going over the syllabus and he says, uh, hey, um, he pulls up a picture of an astronaut fixing the Hubble telescope and reveals that he was the man from the picture. I had never met anyone with any connection from NASA before, but now here I am with an actual astronaut who's my teacher and so, that's kind of how it all began. I decided right then and there that I was going to learn how to become an aerospace engineer from an expert, a true expert in the area. So before I decided to become an aerospace engineer, I was dead set on being a robotics engineer and go to MIT. But when I went to space camp, when I was 13 years old, I fell in love with the space concept itself and I really wanted to be an astronaut. Then I started thinking about rockets and stuff, and I decided instead of robots, I really wanted to learn how to build rockets. I chose to be an aerospace engineer just because it was fascinating. It, it, was, it was hard, and I like a good challenge, and so I wanted to chase that challenge, and I wanted to do interesting things. There's nothing more exciting than sitting on the launch site waiting for a rocket to launch, going through countdown and making sure that all of your subsystems are okay. I would say my favorite part of being an aerospace engineer is the fact that I actually get to work on things in space. How cool is that? My job is actually to do instrument operations engineering. And you may be asking yourself, what in the world is that? Fair enough question. I didn't know either. But the short of it is that it's my job to operate the scientific instruments that we put on spacecraft to go out and explore our solar system, including our own planet. So yeah, I think that going into work every day, knowing that I get to touch something that's in space probably is the most fulfilling part of my job, especially when I know that it's going to be helping people here on Earth. My favorite part of aerospace engineering is the fact that there's still so much we could do with it. We could build rockets and spacecraft to take us to other planets. We haven't done that yet beyond sending robots there. So I really look forward to hopefully being involved in uh, human space missions. So my favorite part of being an aerospace engineer is the impact. The reason that I got into this, the reason that I do what I do is because it's just such exciting work. Here's a picture of the team, and this is the back of Space Shuttle Atlantis. This is the team of astronauts that flew and repaired Hubble. So again, there's, there's me sitting in the front, but we got a chance to meet the astronauts and talk to them and show them their subsystems and help them train their job. And so it's just really fascinating that I can be able to say that I've touched things that have gone to space and that not only have I done that, but I've also been able to do things that just impact people's lives around the world. That's why I stay in aerospace engineering is because it's, it's just fascinating work. Many engineers are needed, each specialized in certain fields to create a single aircraft or spacecraft. There are some aerospace engineers that are hired as research engineers, where they research how to effectively and affordably make the aircraft and spacecraft. Then there are design engineers that develop the design for the aircraft and spacecraft. Others are hired as guidance, navigation, and control engineers to work on the programs that control the aircraft and spacecraft's movements. There are electrical engineers that make sure all the electrical wiring is done right. System engineers, the work to make it so the different systems within the aircraft and spacecraft work correctly. I've been lucky. I haven't come across any personal experiences, at least that I know of. 
where being a woman would cause the issue. I have had mentors and support going back to that professor that told me I need to become a geology major to encourage me to be in the field. But I have heard lots of stories about women who have been discouraged. And I think it also goes back to if you have scientists in your family, it's less of a strange thing, right? It's less of a unknown. But if you are the first person in your family to want to go into a STEM field, it can be a confusing thing and, and scary. And sometimes people will react differently to that. I think that being a woman in aerospace engineering is probably like being a woman in any other field. We come across some challenges where we have to balance things like work-life balance, work and family balance that maybe our gender counterparts don't have to deal with quite as much. But we work past it, right? That makes us stronger, and I feel like it gives us a much more diverse perspective on life that we can then bring to the workplace. I wouldn't say it's any different being a man. I get to build cool rockets and stuff. I get to learn all sorts of things about physics and flight. I just don't have a lot of females in my classes. As far as a gender gap for STEM fields, I'd like to say no, because it's not something that I felt like I had ever had to deal with. Uh, but if you take a look at, this is our team. This was the Atlantis structures team or the structures team that used to work on the space shuttle. And so this is me right here. And you'll see that it's all men. And so I did, even though I never felt on the outside or I never felt like I was being treated differently, there actually was a pretty substantial gender, gender gap working in that position. In my current role, I actually have a much better percentage than, than we did on this team back here. So I probably have probably about 40% of my employees are women. Um, and they bring just such a good diverse perspective to, to the missions, but we don't, we don't tend to notice gender when we go through these things. There is definitely a gender gap in STEM fields. I think we all know it, we see it. And there's this perception that unless you're Bill Nye the science guy, you, there's a perception that there's a certain look to be an engineer. And if you don't look the part, then it might not be for you. I didn't have many mentors growing up, but I can definitely say that I am really proud to be where I am now. And I am proud to be an example for other young girls to see themselves in a field that is just too incredibly cool to leave it only to men. And so when I think about my experience being a woman in aerospace engineering, I would say that I really feel good knowing that the future is definitely going to look more like me. Right now, there may not be many women in this field, but it's changing and I see it changing. And I hope to continue and help this change by encouraging girls to not be afraid of failure. Um, it's really easy to get discouraged, especially with very hard things. And where I work, we do hard things all the time, like sending rovers to Mars. That's a really hard thing. And you're not always gonna get everything right. Nothing will ever be perfect. Failure is part of the process. And so I just hope that more women will embrace the fact that in this field, we will fail, but we will also learn and grow from it. And it's part of the process of becoming an engineer. There's definitely a gender gap in STEM fields, specifically aerospace engineering. I think the numbers for the ratio professionally is one out of 10. But in my school specifically, because it is an aerospace engineering specific school, has a slightly larger ratio. There are one to five. In a lot of my classes, you can definitely see that ratio. And out of a 24 student class, there'll be maybe just me or two to three other girls. I do feel there's a gender gap in STEM fields, especially aerospace engineering. The numbers are out there, but I do feel like that gap is shrinking. I feel like more women are going into STEM fields, more women are being encouraged to go into STEM fields. My experience is that in the field, the scientists that I always worked with, being a woman was never a question, never an issue. It wasn't a problem I personally came across. 
in elementary schools, it's more common that boys would be encouraged to be in STEM fields. I don't think it's an intentional thing. I don't really hear about girls being told they can't be scientists as much. It's a societal thing that we're working on changing. You can do projects related to aerospace engineering, even if you aren't an expert. For example, you can make kites, paper planes, and you can even build and launch a tiny rocket with your parents' consent. If I were to give a piece of advice to girls wondering how they can get involved in this field, I will say, be your best cheerleader. Always believe in yourself. It is really hard to get through this tough major and to find your place and be confident all the time. But the thing is, we all have it in us to be capable and to achieve. And I would hate for you to ever shut a door to your own opportunities because you didn't take the chance to believe in yourself. So that's my piece of advice. If I had to boil it down to one piece of advice, it's the one that sticks with me is a quote by Mauro Andretti that says, if you feel in control, you're not going fast enough. You should be out there doing things that scare you. You should be out there being uncomfortable because that means that you're growing. If it's hard, it means that that's a good thing. And so this was, this is a picture from the Ares 1X program. It was a test rocket that we flew that was going to be the lead in to NASA's mission to the moon. And so that program has changed a little bit. It's just fascinating to think that we have the opportunity to work on that, to build something together that could help further mankind. My advice for any girls wanting to go into aerospace engineering would be to just do it. It's not all that bad. A lot of people are very supportive. And even if people aren't, don't listen to them. It's engineering, you get to build cool stuff. It's a lot of fun. Advice for girls that are going into aerospace engineering or any STEM field, or honestly, anything in your life when you pursue a career, you need to figure out what it is you're interested in, what you have a passion for, and then you need to go do that. If you choose a STEM field, uh, even if you're not the top grade in your class or the top college, if you have a passion and you have a desire and you have a love for what you're doing, you will be successful. So don't let anyone tell you different. Surround yourself with people who support you. Doesn't have to be people who are the same as you. It just has to be, be people who think, you're, if you're interested in something, then you go do it. And if you don't know how to do it, or if it's scary, or if it's different, help you work through that. Surround yourself with the positive and you will succeed and you can do anything you want. Hi, this is Sadiq from Girls Rocket. Today, I am here to discuss the importance of women in engineering. Engineering in the present is unfortunately a profession dominated by men. However, it shouldn't be that way. STEM fields are at their core about innovation. It is this innovation that pushes the industry onward into new cycles of development. With that said, innovation does not belong to one particular race, ethnicity, religion, political background, nor does it belong to any gender. Great ideas can come from any person despite their gender. In addition, it is of the utmost importance that we as aspiring engineers, scientists, mathematicians, and technicians work together hand in hand to create an industry in which all peoples are equal and all ideas are heard. For more information on how to support women in engineering, visit girlsrocket.com and remember everyone, spread support for women in STEM.